Welcome class sa second part ng fourth lesson natin sa earth science. In this video, we will talk about sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. Sa first part, sinabi natin na meron tayong three classification of rocks. Rocks could either be classified as igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, or metamorphic rocks. Now, let's go with sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks form from pre-existing rocks or pieces of one's living organisms. So this type of rock may form from sediments coming from igneous rock, metamorphic rock, or even another sedimentary rock. Another thing, sedimentary rocks may also contain remains of living organisms. May mga process na involved sa formation ng sedimentary rocks. These are weathering, erosion, and lithification. So weathering breaks down rocks into sediments. Erosion naman carries it to different places. And in this place or places, sediments may combine with other sediments, which ultimately leads to the formation of sedimentary rocks. The initial steps in the formation of sedimentary rocks are weathering and erosion. Weathering causes the breakdown of rocks into smaller pieces. And these smaller pieces of rocks are referred to as sediments. Erosion naman carries these sediments to different places. Sa tulong na rin ng different agents, maaaring ito ay dahil sa water, wind, or even glacier. After weathering and erosion, sediments will be deposited in a certain place. In this place, litification will happen. Litification refers to the process where loose sediments turns into rocks. Maaring ito ay dahil sa pressure caused by the process of compaction o kaya naman dahil sa minerals na diluted sa water which will lead to cementation. In this slide, we can see that there are spaces between sediments as they are deposited in a certain place. However, dahil sa continuous weathering and erosion, nadadagdagan ang mga sediments na ito. Natatabunan ang mga naunang na deposit na sediments na mga bagong dating. This will increase the pressure in underly underlying layers of sediments. Eventually, lesser spaces can be seen between each sediments. Cementation naman ensures that little spaces between each compacted sediments are filled up. Water carries dissolved minerals such as calcite, silica, and even iron oxide. Tapos, unti-unti, magpe-precipitate ang mga minerals na ito sa spaces between each sediments. And as they precipitate, they will ensure na mas intact ang sediments sa bawat isa and will lead to the formation of sedimentary rocks. After the processes involved in the formation of sedimentary rocks, discuss naman natin ang iba't ibang classification nito. So, sedimentary rocks could be clastic, chemical, or biochemical. The first classification is clastic sedimentary rocks. So these rocks contains grains and particles that were eroded from weathered rocks. Ito yung type of sedimentary rocks na nabuo mula mismo sa particles ng different rocks. There are different sediments that leads to the formation of clastic sedimentary rocks. Maaaring ito ay clay, silt, sand, pebbles, cobbles, and boulders. As you can see in this chart, their size increases as you go down from clay to boulder. In other references, binabanggit na ang pebbles, cobbles, and boulders are collectively named as gravels. They were saying that if a sediment is bigger than 2 mm, automatic, that is called as gravel. The type of sediment dominant in a rock helps in naming it. 
So this sample is called a silt stone because it is primarily composed of silt. This one naman is sandstone kasi binubuo naman siya ng sand. Claystone naman is made up of clay. On the other hand, breccia is composed of sediments larger than 2 mm. Tas isa sa defining characteristics ng breccia is the presence of angular sediments. Kung mapapansin mo, may angles yung bawat sediments na bumubuo dito. Madalas, compare ang breccia sa conglomerate dahil pareha silang nabuo mula sa sediments larger than 2 mm. Pero ang conglomerate is made up naman of rounded sediments. Hindi distinct yung edges ng sediments sa isang conglomerate. Next classification of sedimentary rocks is chemical sedimentary rocks. This type of rocks form when minerals diluted in water crystallizes. An example of chemical sedimentary rock is rock salt. Rock salt forms when water evaporates that leaves behind the dissolved sodium chloride. Unti-unti, madadagdagan ang amount ng sodium chloride in a certain place, which may then lead to rock salt. Ang oolitic limestone naman ay nabuo mula sa concentrated calcium carbonate in water. In a certain place, calcium carbonate mixed with seawater will precipitate. Magsasama-sama sila at mamumo into a rock. Lastly, we have biochemical sedimentary rocks. This rock type forms from the accumulation of remains of living organisms. Example is limestone, which formed from debris of shells, corals, and even dead algae. Coquina naman is a type of biochemical sedimentary rock composed entirely of cemented shells from different sea creatures. So we are done with igneous and sedimentary rocks. Last part of discussion will be about metamorphic rocks. So this type forms from rocks that are exposed to extreme temperature and pressure. Metamorphism is the process that causes the formation of these rocks. In metamorphism, increase in temperature and changes in conditions, specifically increase in pressure, transform rocks and minerals. Transform in a way na babaguhin ito ang physical and even chemical properties of a rock. Metamorphism could either be regional metamorphism or contact metamorphism. If the metamorphism happens due to direct contact with a hot material, then it is contact metamorphism. Kapag naman due to movement of tectonic plates uh, that cause the increase in pressure and temperature in a rock, then it is regional metamorphism. Mas malaki yung area na pinaggaganapan ng regional metamorphism as compared to the area where contact metamorphism happens. Little to no pressure is involved in contact metamorphism while in regional metamorphism, extreme pressure dominates the process. In this illustration, contact metamorphism may happen malapit sa magma chamber at sa mga dinadaluyan na magma. So maaaring masabi natin na dito, yung mga rocks surrounding this magma chamber will undergo metamorphism. Specifically, contact metamorphism. Regional metamorphism happens naman in places where there is convergence of two different tectonic plates. So we can say that metamorphic rocks due to regional metamorphism 
are forming in this part. The following are the changes that may happen to a rock as it undergoes metamorphism. Changes in texture, mineral content, and foliation happens as rock undergoes metamorphism. Texture changes as a rock undergoes metamorphism. Maaring mas lumaki o lumiit ang mineral grains present in rocks as it is exposed to extreme heat and pressure. Take this for example. Some limestones is said to have fossiliferous texture. This is caused by the presence of fossilized remains in them. Pero after metamorphism, fossiliferous texture is destroyed and more calcite grows in the rock. Maaari natin masabi na naluto yung mineral sa limestone and after metamorphism, it ends up as marble. Minerals present in a rock may also change as it undergoes metamorphism. This chart presents the index minerals that may appear in a metamorphic rock. Scientists use these minerals as marker and helps them identify the amount of heat a metamorphic rock is exposed to. So sa umpisa, pre-existing rocks may not contain colorite, muscovite, biotite, garnet, andalusite, and silimanite. They can only form if a certain rock is exposed to certain temperature. Halimbawa, ang piece of rock ay maaring walang silimanite. But when it undergoes metamorphism and was exposed to temperature that is around 600 to 800 degrees Celsius, silimanite will start forming in this rock. Foliation may also happen in metamorphism. Foliation in metamorphic rock happens when pressure squeezes minerals, which in turn makes minerals flat and elongated. Sa example na to, uh, granite and igneous rock turns into gneiss. Sa unang tingin, may kita mo na parang merong uh, layers ang gneiss. Ito, mga layers. This one. So this is actually the foliation. Minerals present in granite line up as it changes into gneiss. In this illustration, imagine that these are minerals present in a rock. As metamorphism happens, they will be squeezed due to pressure. Squeezing them will then lead to lining up of minerals. They will line up in elongated or platy manner and perpendicular to the direction of pressure. So if this mineral or if this alignment of minerals looks like this, pressure will then come from this direction. And after some time, it will look like this. So again, these arrows represent the pressure or the direction of pressure that is in contact with these metamorphic rocks. Let's have some examples of metamorphic rocks. So shale a type of sedimentary rock will turn into phyllite, into schist, and lastly, into gneiss. May kita natin na nagsimula sa sedimentary rock, then will turn into a metamorphic rock, pero a metamorphic rock can still change into another type of metamorphic rock. Another example is this, granite. An igneous rock will turn into gneiss after metamorphism. And that's the end of our lesson about rocks.